What we're going to be going over here is an impairment of debt securities classified as available for sale securities. And for example here, Corporation A has bonds classified as available for sale here and we'll be looking at a reporting period here 1231X1 and at that time they have a par value here of $800,000. The amortized cost is $800,000 and they have a fair value here of $740,000. That's at our 1231X date here and based on that here we have an unrealized loss of $60,000. So they had the amortized cost here $800,000, fair value of $740,000. So that's where our unrealized loss comes in here of $60,000. And the other thing to note here, we're not going to be dealing with any amortized discounts or premiums because par value here equals our amortized cost. So this $60,000 here was previously recognized as other comprehensive income in shareholders equity. Now it's determined that this unrealized loss here of $60,000 is permanent and impairment accounting is now appropriate. And also we're going to be looking at our next reporting period here, 1231X x2 here and at that time the fair value of the bonds has, is $760,000. Okay so let's go up and let's look at how we deal with this impairment a, a loss here on these bonds here. So again these bonds are classified as available for sale. We'll be looking here at the first reporting period here on 1231x1. They have that par value of 800,000 amortized cost of 800,000 so the bonds are fully amortized for any discount or premium so we're not going to complicate our problem by throwing in any amortized any further amortization here. But what we do have here when you're dealing with these available for sale securities here, you're going to have to recognize some unrealized gains or losses for the period here that you're you look at the period that you have to um, account for those or report those securities at. And we do that here by taking, in this case, the amortized cost of those bonds here uh, of $800,000 and then compare it to the fair value here of $740,000. So you can see the fair value is less than our amortized cost here and the difference is $60,000. So at that point, at what we're looking at here in our previous year here, we had recognized an unrealized loss in this case of $60,000. And that's sitting in shareholders' equity is part of other comprehensive income. Hasn't gone into the income statement sitting in shareholders' equity here. Okay, so now we come along here and looking at this bond loss in value is considered to be permanent. This unrealized loss here is now considered to be permanent. Therefore, it's considered impaired. And by doing that, uh, considering it impaired, you have to write down the cost basis to the new cost basis here and we'll be looking at 1231X1. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at how we'd be handling these, this available for sale securities here. So what you're going to have to do here, your available for sale securities, you would actually have a portfolio of those securities. We're only going to be looking at it in terms of this single security here, this bond that we have, but there would be other securities in this available for securities, securities account here and they really come into play in our example here. So uh, again, set up your account here on your balance sheet, these available for sale securities and you have to record them at the cost here and at their cost. And in this case, this bond here, we do it at the bond's carrying value. Whatever the carrying value is on that bond, that's what we're recording here. Okay, so along with our available for sale securities, we have to have a fair value adjustment account here, and it adjusts our securities up and down based on the fair value at reported at the end of the each reporting period here. And along with our fair value adjustment, any fair value adjustments here get moved over or recorded here as unrealized gains or losses as part of equity here on our balance sheet. Okay, so let's go up and let's look to deal with this loss on impairment first here. So first for our well, first let's look at how we'd record this bond here. So what's sitting at our bond, uh, at our date here in 1231X1 is in our cost for those bonds here or their carrying value is $800,000. Now we come along with this loss. So how do we rec recognize our loss on impairment? And that is going to go into be recognized here on our income statement for these uh, this available for sale security of this bond here. So the impairment loss, simply take the carrying value of the bond at that time um, and subtract and compare it to the fair value of the bond. So our carrying value, we looked at that here before, eight hundred thousand dollars, 
and then the fair value was 740000 here. So there is that $60,000 uh, uh, loss here. The, it was unrealized. Now we're going to realize it here on our income statement. So in our account here, loss on impairment, you would debit that here for $60,000. That's the impaired loss here. And then uh, that would be recognized here in our income statement. And then the other entry here we would credit are available for sale securities directly here. We directly write down those available for sale securities. So we have the bond here at its carrying value, $800,000. Now we have to deal with that loss here that, uh, and we have to write down it to its, uh, write down the, the loss amount here of $60,000 that we had previously unrealized, now it's going to be uh, realized here in our, uh, on, as a write down to our uh, bond, carry, uh, bond carrying value here. So uh, $60,000 credit amount here, $800,000 carrying value here. So the new cost basis is the difference here, $740,000. Okay. You see that here. So that's our new cost basis. So when you're dealing with these impairments here, you write down your securities directly and you're available for sale account. You don't do, you have to do a fair value adjustment that we're going to look at here, but you write them down directly in the account. And then any write down of those uh, and your reduction here and you're available for sale securities and this for the specific uh, security here, this bond here, then you recognize as a loss on impairment on your income statement. So whatever you write down here and you're available for sale securities, you would recognize as a loss here. So here's that $740,000. That's our new cost basis. So that's what we're going to be using uh, from for now on for making, making uh, looking at our available for sale securities here when we have to look at our fair value adjustment here. And then the other point is here with this new cost basis, you can see we have we do not amortize it up to $800,000, it's maturity value. This bond here has actually a maturity value here of 800000 Now we've written it down here to $740,000, but we, we don't go through any amortizing and amortize it up to its cost. It just sits there at uh, its new cost basis. Okay, so now for this fair value adjustment here. We've taken care of our write down, but this is the other point that's really important in this example here. Um, we have to look at that previous fair value adjustment that we made here. Previously here, uh, the previous year here, we had credited or reduced our available for sale security here, that bond here, by $60,000. So our adjustment here was credit or reduce our available for sale bond here by $60,000. And then the other entry would have gone to an unrealized holding gain or loss here as ec as part of equity on the balance sheet. It didn't go into the income statement. It would have, uh, we would have debited that here for $60,000. So that was that unrealized holding gain or loss. That was that a previous amount on our bond. Now we come along here to our adjustment date here when we uh, actually recognize that loss on impairment. So this is really the key that we're looking at here. What we would do, well, you have the, this was due to our bond here. Since we don't have our bond anymore here, we recognize the impairment loss up here. Uh, we can't include it in our unrealized holding gains or losses anymore. We have to take it out here. So uh, we had the $60,000 amount here and a uh, debit amount here. Now we just would have to what we're going to be doing is adjusting our available for sale account here. That's what we're going to do here. You would think that you would have just had a debit here, you cut it, cut it at here, and then your debit or your lot, and then you would have the debit amount going right to your loss and impairment account, but it doesn't work that way here. What we have to do is we have to take this out of here, and the only way we can take it out here is by uh, crediting our unrealized holding gain and loss here, our equity account, and moving it over to our available for sale adjustment here. Uh, debit that here for $60,000. So essentially what we're doing is we're removing this unrealized holding gain or loss for our bond here. It's no longer sitting here. And then we, we're adjusting 
our remaining our other securities up here whatever's sitting here we're adjusting those up here by sixty thousand dollars and that's done at that 1231 uh, report first reporting period here when we recognize that loss on impart and on impairment so that's a key point here whatever was sitting here uh, due to that uh, loss that we're now recognizing an impairment has to be backed out and it has we're adjusting our fair value adjustment and we're adjusting whatever remaining securities are we're increasing their value by the amount here that we were initially recognizing here as an as a unrealized loss on those bonds so b here that we'll just go over that again here that's where you adjust your ava uh, available for sale securities to the fair value here uh, on this case on 1231x1 for any remaining available for sale sale securities the previous bond adjustment has now been realized as a loss here not included anymore so now we have to adjust our securities up so I can, so hope you can see what's going on here and then one last thing here let's just look at the next thing that we have to look at here is let's just take our next reporting period here and that was where now the fair value of our securities or uh, that bond security here is now seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars that's on 1231 x2 here so the key point is here we have to adjust the fair value based on the new cost basis of that bond here so what we were sitting at here on our cost basis here was uh, seven hundred and forty thousand dollars here when we wrote it down here for our new cost basis here in 1231 x2 x1 here but now comes along a year later our next reporting period here and it's now the value of that fair value of that bond is seven hundred sixty thousand dollars so we have an increase here over our cost our cost our new cost basis here 740 and then our new uh, our valuation here fair value here on uh, at the end of the next year here so we got a twenty thousand dollar increase here so moving up to our adjustment account here you can see what's going on here we have to take our fair value adjustment that's for this new cost here of $740,000 it's now increased to $760,000 so for our um, our available for sale here for our bond we have took at our $740,000 here cost then our adjustment here goes into that fair value adjustment here for $20,000 debited here for $20,000 that's at 1231 x1 here so you can see we've moved it up here from $740,000 add the $20,000 to it here so now we're up to our adjusted value here in 1231x2 here of $760,000, the fair value. And then with the adjustment here, then uh, of 20,000 debit here to fair value adjustment, this is goes into unrealized holding gain or loss in our equity account on our balance sheet. It doesn't go on into income statement, it goes into equity. So on, for our adjustment here, we would have credited our unrealized holding uh, gain here in this case by $20,000. So you see what's going on here. Um, just to review what's going on here. When you have that loss on impairment here, you write down your security directly here in your um, in this case for the available for sale security you write it down directly and then you recognize the loss on impairment uh, on your income statements or any write down here but along with that the key thing is any unrealized holding gains or losses that you had for that particular security in this case it was that bond we had that unrealized uh, uh, loss here uh, as part of equity here it wasn't didn't go into the income statement we have to remove that out here so we have to take it off uh, take it out of our unrealized holding gains and loss and to do that you're essentially you have to adjust your fair value adjustment account here up by that amount and that's not based on the fact here that you would have other securities if you didn't have those other securities here then that wouldn't have be necessary here but this is the case here where you have to back it out here and make sure that your uh, other securities here are adjusted at their fair value and then and then at the when the, any following reporting periods here you base your cost on your new cost basis you don't go back to any old cost basis you take your new cost basis compare that to any uh, fair value at the particular reporting period you're looking at here and if the fair value here is greater than your cost then you have to adjust your uh, 
your make your fair value adjustment down here. If it's the opposite here, if your uh, fair value is less than your new cost, then you would have to make your adjustment down here. And when you do that adjustment, then remember any adjustment that you make to fair value account here has to go into an unrealized holding gain or loss as part of equity here on our balance sheet. Okay, so that takes care of our discussion here with this impairment of debt securities here as classified here as available for sale securities.